So, all of that's planning for season three. And we've been offered an interview with Real Madrid. Hello there guys and welcome to what I'm going to currently title Season 3 Episode 0 of Let's Go Hammers. I'm Stu Bo, thank you very much for joining me in today's episode where we're going to work out exactly what happens going forward. I mentioned in the last episode that we've actually hit all of the criteria I set out uh, for this save, which was get us into the top three of the Premier League, we've done that two seasons in a row now, get us to an established Champions League team, this coming third season would be our second season in the Champions League, uh, and win the FA Cup, which we inexplicably did this season, in season two. So, this was going to be a transfer special and first game of the season, but I don't know. I mean, as you can see, we have got an interview with Real Madrid. Now, that's no guarantee that we would get the job. Having said that, if we have a look on the staff page, if I show you uh, the job centre, you can see we're actually the favourites for the job. And that's what first alerted me. If you saw at the end of the last episode, I left you guys with a bit of a stinger. And I said in that episode that, you know, we were the media's favourite for the job. Now, I don't necessarily know whether taking the job is the right thing to do because I want to do one more season with West Ham and see whether we can win the title but how often in a save in particular a save with a club like West Ham do you get offered to go to Real Madrid and I'm just thinking what a cool postscript because we've done what we set out to do in the save it took me far less time than I thought it would and that all credits to the players um you know and all credit is to the luck that we've had because we've had some great luck how cool a postscript would it be for us to go to Madrid for two seasons and just try and take over the rest of the world in those two seasons? Let's do like a quick fire two season challenge in the fictional world of this save and try and do it. We're not going to do the interview just yet. Before we do that, I want to show you the business that we've done first just to show you the team that we would be potentially leaving behind. So if I quickly show you transfers, let's transfer history. So uh, as you can see, the only transfer that's happened this season technically is Chris Metham's. Uh, deal to Brentford has been confirmed. Um, £10 million has come into the transfer kitty as a result of that. Towards the end of last season, we did make a bunch of transfers. Sort this in the... Oh, that's gone all the way to season one. We didn't want that. So let's just do that. There we go. So, transfers we've brought in. You already knew about one Luca Mancini. You already knew about Umar Saleh, or at least you knew that was coming. You already knew about Yuri Tielemans. You already knew about Victor Christiansen. You didn't know about Tino Livramento. He is our new right back. Yes, Paolo Maffeo is going to be leaving us, I think, in a day's time. This is the lad, if it will load, that we've brought in to replace him. We spent a lot of money on Tino Livramento. But I think it's money well spent in the future. Uh, defensively, he's solid enough. Going forward, he's pretty solid. He's quick. I think he could be an absolute superstar for us if we get to use him. That's the big thing, if we get to use him. Uh, we're currently looking for another central midfielder at the moment. Um, but as well as signing Tino, along with those other signings, we did also let... Uh, Gonzalo Cardoso guy who's never really going to be a player for us Bowen Grilich has left and the reason he has left is because he wanted more game time and we said no so that transfer has happened uh, we've also got if I go back to the main screen Matthias Ginter is on his way out he'll be going to AC Milan for £32.5 million remember we got him on a free he has made us profit completely Paolo Maffeo, I think you guys already knew about. And Roberto Alvarado is finally leaving as well, going to RB Leipzig for £20 million. Considering at one point the offers we were getting in for him were in the uh, single digits of millions, I'm very impressed that we've got that amount, to be honest with you. So I think those are some good transfer fees. As you can see, it leaves us with a quite a big transfer budget. Bearing in mind our original budget was about £50 million. If we put that down a little bit, the game's being a bit slow today. We can't adjust it at the moment, but... That's a decent transfer budget for considering what we've got left to do. What we've actually got left to do, if we look at the team, again, this has been quite slow today. Uh, all we've really got to do, if I'm being completely honest with you, is an extra defensive-minded central midfielder, or if we consider Thomas Suchek to be that defensive-minded central midfielder, an extra deep-line playmaker. Yuri Tielemans is going to be a starter for us. I think that means that our midfield two is going to be Declan Rice and Yuri Tielemans. Which I think means Thomas Suchek is going to be back up. Now, he could come in and play in this position here. 
Although looking at his uh, his stats, 13 passing, 10 vision, 5 flare, doesn't scream playmaker to me. But he could be the option in this midfield, kind of the brute enforcer. And then we have the playmaker next to him. So he could be a backup in that role. We have him come in and be a ball winning midfielder instead of a central midfielder on defence. I think that could work out well for us. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got plenty of money to sort that position out. And also maybe even look at upgrading a couple more positions. Chris Jansen has come in as a left back. And we've also got Tino Livramento as a right back. We could look at upgrading Aaron Cresswell and maybe moving Cresswell on. Perhaps. I don't think Cresswell is long for this world. Um, makes it sound like he's dying. You know what I mean. I don't think he's going to be the top quality left back we need this season to progress. If we, again, continue on this season. But really, that's the only position I can think to spend money on. Every other position I think we're good with. Other than that central midfielder, we've got a backup right winger, backup central attacking midfielder, backup left winger, backup striker. We've got players who can play in multitudes of positions as well. Maybe we try and bring in uh, Ainsley Maitland-Niles on loan again because he was a great cover option or even someone similar to him who can do right back and left back. Remember, however, we do already have that in Ben Johnson. So maybe Ben Johnson becomes that and we bring in a bespoke right back back up to live Romenso. we've got great amounts of money to do that with so that is a possibility but none of that really matters at this point because if we get the real madrid job i don't know what i'm gonna do and i think i'm gonna have to wait until it's actually confirmed so this is why it's kind of season three episode zero because i don't know what season three is going to be yet so what do you say we get into this interview shall we I think that sounds like a grand idea. If you want to see me get into the interview and you want to see what's going to happen in the episode, drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well for more Football Manager awesomeness. I don't know whether I've already said that. If I have already said that, I'll try and edit it out. If I haven't, though, I'm going to level with you. The episode will continue if you don't do a like or subscribe, but it would be nice to do. So, yeah. Oh, this is going to be the biggest decision of the save, I think. Okay, so been invited to the interview they're very impressed with our great performance at west ham united i mean to be fair why wouldn't you be although the board of confidence in your ability to perform the drug concerns about your suitability to deliver the club's ambitions for the future mainly as a result of your complete lack of experience in winning silverware we've won trophies two seasons in a row when by rights we shouldn't have we won the Europa League last season we won the european super cup this season and the fa cup and finished second in the premier league what a load of waffle, but let's go for it anyway. We're attending the interview. Valentino Perez is going to interview us. He mentions the Super League. We walk out immediately. Uh, thank you for taking time. Yeah, absolutely. Are you worried about not being able to speak the language? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Fairly adept at learning languages. I think that one works. I certainly do not have all that much managerial experience. Not been in the managerial game that long, as a, and as a result, I'm not able to build up the spirit you're perhaps looking for. I don't have the experience other managers have, but I do get a track, track record. I have sufficiently impressive reputation that should make up for any supposed lack of experience. Hiring me would be a risk, sure, but I think it's a risk worth taking. I believe there are more important things than where that I have enough experience in management. <sighs> I want to get this right. I really want to get this right. I want to put us in the best possible opportunity, the best possible position to get this job, even if we don't end up taking it. I am feeling like the middle one works a little bit, but I feel like that's too braggadocious. So I feel like maybe... Maybe we say we have a good track record. I want to put something in there positive. And I think we say that one. Yeah, we're going to go with that one. You've done some highly impressive work at current club. Why do you want to move on? Uh, time for me to take the next step. I believe in position to take a positive momentum. I built up and use it to hit the ground running here. I feel like I'll take it as far as I can. I'm party with best served by a change of scenery. Uh, next step, I think. Rumours that you've routinely broken promises to your players. Care to explain yourself? I think these pl the, the players have been numpties, to be honest with you. When you're a manager, as long as I have situations like that, bounce for every now and then. I've only ever done what I thought was the right thing at the time. I have to tell you I'd white lie here without definitely not saying that. I'm not proud of it and I certainly don't intend on repeating those mistakes. Happens a long time ago, I moved on from them. Probably don't nothing to do with this club. I think we might say this one. Are you willing to assure us that you do a better job meeting expectations than your potential predecessor did? Um I don't wanna say that one. We'll say that one, because it is true. How do you feel about working with our current director of football, Manu Fernandez? Yeah, more than happy. We understand the importance of having the right back and team in place and managing the So we're going to understand the request. So this is going to be how much money do you want? 
Uh, small budget. I don't think many of the staff will want to come, but we'll do what we can. So, here's long term future. Attacking football. Don't sign players over the age of 30. That's absolutely fine by me. High, most reputable team in Spain. Work within the rage budget. One year contracts for players over the age of 32. Two year over the age of 30. Three year over the age of 28. Four year contracts for everyone under that. They want us to win a domestic cup next season and qualify for the Champions League. They don't want much, do they? Uh, and then the end of the season after, challenge for the La Liga title. Realistically, if we get this job, I really want to be only staying for two seasons. So, we'll say that is acceptable. Targeting Champions League qualification. Um, I'm going to say we're going to challenge for the league title. Whoa! <laughs> Florentino, my man, 125 million. Yeah, do you know what? That works. Six million as a wage budget. What is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? That's more than double what we've got at West Ham. Uh, we'll agree with that. Are there any requests you'd have for us to help you achieve your goals? Um, no, we'll just go with that. Well, well. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we interviewed well, so we can have the option to see what would happen. I'm excited, but I don't know how I feel about it. I really want to see if we can actually get offered the job, and then we'll make a decision. But right now, I'm really tempted. I haven't even looked at the squad. Let's have a quick nose at the squad. Let's see what they've got to work with. They've got some old men. But we can work... When we've got 125 million, it doesn't really matter who they've got because we can just make a new squad. Uh, Sydney is 33. Otamendi's 35. Uh, Edda Militao's 25. Uh, and then we've also got Victor Schust. I don't even know who he is. I'm assuming he's a young player. Yeah, he does look very young and he doesn't look very good either. Uh, they've got Nacho. So let's, I tell you what, instead of doing it like that, let's have a look at by value so Luka Jovic is the most valuable player apparently 17 goals in 25 starts last season did a decent job for them Valicius Jr is still at the club it looks decent um did pretty well 15 goals and five assists in 41 starts Edna Militao did well for them they've got Brozovic there uh, Guido Rodriguez is someone I'm not overly familiar with um but he looks decent they signed him from Real Betis in this save actually he doesn't look that good I think I would bin him off Jesus Corona would probably be someone I would move on as well. They've still got Brahim Diaz at the club. And he looks like he's getting pretty good. Although he's been out on loan this season. Who's he been on loan at? At AC Milan. So we'd get him back and see how well he developed. Renier is there. Eden Hazard at 32 is still there as well. Uh, Rodrigo we know because we had him uh, at West Ham in our first season. And he did well for us actually. We were a bit harsh in sending him back. He did well. Couple of old, ma uh, old men still in the squad. Tony Cruz is here. So is Luka Modric. 33 and 37 respectively. There's a rebuilding job to be done here. And there's a couple of things that are a bit frustrating for me. Number one, Diogo Jota. Uh, Diogo Jota was on loan, but he's joining permanently. That's pretty good. What concerns me is the sale of um, Eduardo Camavinga. I looked at this before. Apparently, it's because Camavinga wasn't happy about something. Um, so he was transfer listed by request. He had played three games for them. Which is annoying because I might have built the squad around him. But we're not going to be able to do anything about that. There's some dead weight here that could be moved on. But there's also some absolute quality in here as well. So I don't want to get my hopes up too much. But if we get this job, my word. It's going to be hard to turn it down. It's going to be very hard. Right. Um, until we hear about that, I'm going to carry on through um as we were and we're going to just see whether we can bring in a defensive midfielder that's the main thing we want to do and then after we've done that we'll see what else we can do um so i'll bring you guys back when there's something to talk about uh no real madrid news just yet however we are in the process of making what could be the final signing for the club ivan Illich from manchester city this was my director of football actually uh putting this offer in it's 25 million i don't know if it's 25 million up front or in installments but we've just offered him a contract it's quite a big contract but looking at him he's pretty good now he could be even better for the future his passing and his vision are really good he's got good teamwork he's off the ball's not too bad he'll do a job in that midfield as a defensively sound option as well as someone who can go forward and operate um, with a more expansive passing range. To me, he looks the business. I'd be very happy to have him if we actually get him. 
We're the ones who put the bid in for him so far. Um, AC Milan have matched it, but he seems to be more interested in us. So we are hoping that we do get that transfer going through. Other than that, we've just done a couple of loan deals from some youngsters, or at least we've offered them out. We have also had... Uh, where is he? Where is he? Zakarian back from his loan. He was obviously loaned back to Dinamo. Yeah, Dinamo Moscow. I thought I said it wrong then, but I didn't. Uh, we loaned him back there. He did all right last season. He did pretty well, in fact. Um, looks like a tasty player. He's a wonder kid. He can play in the hole. We don't necessarily need him, but he's a good player. So worst case scenario, we can put him out on loan again, but I'd actually quite like to use him. He could be a good utility option to have across the midfield options. Could even play as a midfielder there. I don't know if I would want to play him now, but he could do a job there. So all is still good. But again, we are still waiting for the offer from Real Madrid. Um, it might not come. Uh, they were very reserved about the chances of us getting the job in the uh before the interview in the offer so it might not happen but we haven't heard anything yet we're still if we go onto the staff screen favorites for the job as you can see we are the leading candidate so just have to wait and see well i'm actually quite disappointed but i understand completely this guy i think was at ac milan he was indeed at ac milan he's there in real life in fact so he has just left milan to come to here i don't blame them for going for him he's a proven manager whereas we have only been managing for two seasons so i'm not overly surprised but i am disappointed i was really hoping to get that job or at least be offered it so we could have a think about it um but that makes the decision easy for us. One more year at West Ham, and then we look to do a new save uh, afterwards. So now we knuckle down and try and make sure this squad is as good as it can be for this season. And we just try and do what we did last season. Let's try and win. A, let's try and win another trophy. Let's try and finish as high up in the league as we can. Maybe even win the league if we get lucky. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, I'm a bit gutted. I did even. A bit sneaky. I actually declared interest just to, to see whether that would do anything. But uh, some of the players are wanting bigger contracts now. In fact, I'll do this while I'm here with you guys. We'll discuss it with him. We'll say that we want to give him one. Um, I mean, he's probably going to be a backup player for us this season. But he's a good player, to be fair, Thomas Sushak. I don't want to lose him. He's good in the air. Um, he's one of those players that just, I think, really helps. Whilst the player is a ball-winning midfielder in the middle, he will do that, to be fair. I would rather him be a regular starter than an important player. <sighs> this is where we could fall a cropper, because he's not going to be playing as much as he wants to play. But we are going to go for it, and we'll deal with any issues accordingly. The issue is, all of the players have realised that they're playing in a team that nearly won the title last year, and they all want to get paid for the fact that they were in a title... Uh, nearly winning title team last season uh so and i completely understand that i completely understand that but by the same token you know need to live a little bit of money if i'm being completely honest with you that took a lot longer than it should have done but we finally agreed a contract with him so the original plan was going to be that this was going to be season three episode zero just because of everything uh, going around the uh, the potential move to Real Madrid, which still baffles me that they actually even offered us an interview. Um, we're going to keep this as episode zero. We're going to get up to the game, uh, our first game of the season against Southampton. So we're going to play through all of the friendlies. We're going to do all of the uh, last little bits of transfer business that we've got. And we are going to get us to that first game, finish there, and then episode one will be, in fact, thinking about it, We'll do the Community Shield turn in this episode, and then we'll do the first two games of the Premier League season in the next one. That sounds like a plan to me. So, unless we have any more transfers, I'll bring you back when we get to the Liverpool game in the Community Shield. See you in a bit. Okay, we do have another transfer uh, in the wake of us not getting the Madrid job. Ivan Illich has come from Manchester City for £22.5 million. Uh, he will provide cover for the uh, the deep line playmaker position, which is going to be occupied by Yuri Tillemans. Uh, in fact, we're going to put him straight into the, uh, the old team here. So he will come in. He will play in this position. We need to make this position uh, a definitive thing, actually. He will do a good job here, I think. He's got the uh, passing. He's got the vision. He's got a decent amount of flair. He likes trying killer balls. He likes playing uh, one-twos. He likes playing tempo. I think it's a very good signing, personally. He's young. He's got potential. He's already a full Serbian international. 
I think, personally, that is a cracking signing. We're going to add him to the training camp squad, and we're going to get Declan Rice as the new club captain. I didn't mention that before. Declan Rice is our new club captain. Um, we have, uh, yeah, Mark Noble He's not going to play. He's a player coach now. I don't know whether I mentioned that before, but we offered him a new contract, and he wants to be a player coach. So he is a player coach. He's not going to get much game time, if any at all. It made sense to make him uh, Declan Rice the new club captain. As a result of that, if I'll just quickly show you, the vice captain is now Issa Diop. We're still going to have Mark Noble as a stand-in captain, but that's where we fall as captains, and I think it's the right thing to do. We'll put Tielemans uh, on this list as well. He can go ahead of Thomas Suchek. But yeah, I, I think that makes perfect sense, to be honest with you. And I think that's a great signing. So, in theory, in theory, that's the squad. Not necessarily in its strongest order. That's going to be the squad for the first friendly of the season. But we've got two uh, decent right backs in Livermento and Ben Johnson. We've got two decent left backs in Christian Jansen and Cresswell. Mancini and Soleil are our backup central defenders to Issa Diop and Kurt Zuma. In midfield, we've got uh, Ivan Illich and Thomas Suchek, who are our backup pairing to Declan Rice and Yuri Tielemans. We've got Harvey Elliott and Gawiri as wingers, backup to Jared Bowen and Nuni Madueke. Tiago Armada and Yanis Hadji are going to rotate through the season as they did last year. And Brenner is the backup to Julian Alvarez. And as a spare attacking option, we've got uh, Arsene Zakarian, who I think is going to be pretty tasty as well. The only thing I would like... Well, the only two things I would like. Thing number one, possibly an upgrade on left back. Uh, and get rid of Cresswell out. And possibly either a better right back backup instead of Ben Johnson. And have Ben Johnson as backup between the two. Or get someone who can do the role that Ainsley Maitland-Niles did last season. And who can cover the two. Just someone who maybe is a two and a half star player. Who can just cover those two positions uh, quite comfortably. Ben Johnson could be that player. I just don't think at left back he does a decent enough job. No, at the moment he doesn't actually. So we might not have Ben Johnson be that man. But I need to have a think about that. But we've got the money to do it. We've still got £38 million left in the transfer kitty. We've still got a decent amount of wage budget as well. We've got the facilities to do it. So we'll have a look. We'll see what's out there. Um, but Ivan Illich, very happy with that. Well, hold up. Hold up. The AC Milan board have invited you to attend an interview with them as they wish to discuss with you the possibility of becoming their new manager. Just for context, AC Milan are the club that, if I can find the manager history, they're the ones that Stefano Pioli actually left to go to Real Madrid. Uh, this is AC Milan, who I think this season... What did they do last year? Did they win Serie A last season? I don't know. Let's have a find now. Where did they finish? They won Serie A last season by nine points. Title-winning Serie A wants us to be, at least consider, to become their manager. Obviously, there's still a lot of things to happen. Carlo Ancelotti is the favourite. I don't think for a second we're getting it over Carlo Ancelotti. But, it'd be rude not to attend the interview, so why don't we do that, boys and girls? What is happening in this save? All of a sudden, we're getting all of the interviews. So, let's have a chat. So, uh, I'm going to say... I uh, don't. Well, that one. Should we go with that one? Um, yeah, we'll go with that one. Uh, reservations, never mentioned in this country. Um, we'll say that one. Uh, da, 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 da. say that one. Highly impressive work. Why do you want to move on? Take the next step. Rumors you've been routinely broken. Promises. I don't really like this question. We'll say that one. Potentially replace someone who is very much liked by our fans. Uh, we'll say that one. Yeah, happy to work with the director of football. Um, we'll say a small budget for that. Long-term vision. Sign players in the age 22. That could be a bit difficult, but if they give us a decent transfer budget, we probably can do that. Wage budget and four-year contracts is fine. They want us to reach the quarter-final of the Champions League. Challenge for the Serie A title. Reach the final of the Coppa Italia. And the only, they're not even bothered with Super Coppa. They're not even bothered. So it's required for the Serie A challenging for the title and also reaching the quarter-final. They're required, but actually Coppa Italia is only favoured. So that'll be okay. And that's all we need to worry about for this season. I mean, that... That sounds all right to me. Happy to work with that. Uh, I think that's absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. I mean, it's not 125 million, is it? 
Oh, that stings a bit. I mean, we'll have to agree with that. The wage budget, I don't I think the West Ham wage budget is bigger than that, you know. I mean, we'll agree with it. I mean, you, our wage budget at West Ham is bigger than that. I was very excited for that. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I saw the wage budget. I'll update you as time goes on, but I don't feel very uh, drawn to that job, shall we say. And the right-back, left-back signing that I wanted to make has been confirmed. And we've signed James Justin from Leicester. Uh, he is predominantly a right-back, but he can do left-back very, very well as well. Um, I'm very happy with this signing. He can cover in the middle as well if we needed him to. And he wouldn't embarrass himself there, I don't think. Um, more of a defensive left-back option, which I... Um, well, yeah, defensive left-back option, but defensive right-back option as well. I think he is going to complement the, uh, the attacking-minded Liv Romento... And I forget the other lad's name. What's his name? Christiansen. I think he's going to complement those two fantastically. I think we have improved this squad immeasurably. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is dropping Thomas Sushek. I'm still not completely convinced it's the right thing to do. I think he is still a very good player. But I think having him in the team, as good as it was, did restrict us a little bit. And I think having the extra creativity of a Yuri Tillemans or Ivan Illic in that midfield role, either or, I think really helps us out. And I think, actually, it could be the thing that really helps unlock us. And it's not like uh, Sushek isn't going to get game time. He's going to come into that midfield role and do a good job for us. But Declan Rice is going to be the man who is there predominantly. Captain Rice is going to be the man. I think we're pretty much done with this squad, unless anything dramatic happens. The only thing I would consider letting happen at the moment is letting Aaron Cresswell, who's wanted by a couple of clubs, by the way... Letting him move on and bringing in another first choice left back. But I don't really want to do any more. I don't want to upset the balance of the squad too much. But I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far. So again, I'm going to carry on forward. Try and get us to the Liverpool game. And uh, and yeah, we'll see whether anything else happens between now and then. See what happens with the AC Milan job. I've still not heard about that. See if anyone else offers me a job as well. I thought this was going to be a straightforward summer. Well... That definitely makes things a lot easier. Um, who's going to offer me a job next? Dortmund's? Munich? Manchester United? That'd be nice. Oh, goodness me. Right, hopefully we can just put all of this behind us and get on with the season. Hopefully. And no more transfer news. We are back and we are ready for the Community Shield against Liverpool. Uh, just to give you a quick rundown of the... Uh, you see all my things that I've just put on there. Um, just give you a quick rundown of the friendly situation. That's how we've done in pre-season. We've done pretty well, I think. We've battered some teams. Uh, we tried to have a mix of teams as well. So there's a bunch of three stars, a couple of three and a half stars. Um, so we've got a good range of teams that we have played. Uh, but none of that really matters because what we want to do is go to Liverpool and hopefully get some revenge on them nicking the title from us last season. And this is the 11 that I think gives us a good chance of doing that. So, without any further ado, Lafont in goal, Livramento, Diop, Zuma and Christiansen in defence. Tillemans and Rice in midfield with Bowen, Almada and Madueke supporting Alvarez up front. Everyone's had a good pre-season. James Justin's the only one who has been a little bit average. Chris Jansen as well. He's just settling into the team. But I'm hopeful for this season. This team looks good. This team looks very good. Hopefully, I can look good in actual competition as well. So, let's go. Let's do it, boys. Come on. I'm happy with the transfers we've made. I'm very happy with them. I think Chris Jansen and um, Liv Romento are very good signings. I think that bringing in uh, Tielemans is a good piece of business as well. J James Justin is one I'm surprised that we got him for... Uh, I can't remember exactly how much we got him for, but I'm surprised we got him as cheaply as we did. He did cost money, but I'm a bit surprised that he didn't cost more money than he did. So I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. But it still surprises me a little bit, and I think... We still need a bit of time for the players to gel. So I'm not looking at this performance and saying it's a an outlier for the rest of the season. At the end of the day, this is the fanciest preseason friendly in football. Um, and I'm literally treating it as that. And Sadio Mane nearly puts a goal past us very early on. Um, one minute. 
Still haven't seen whether there's an update for this yet, so I need to have a look at that after I finish recording this episode. Um, but yeah, whatever happens in this game is not an outlier for the season. This is just one of those games that's a bit of fun. Um, if we get battered by them, we get battered by them. It would be nice to nick a victory, though. Uh, if winning the Community Shield would be quite, quite fun for me. Um, we have actually... Oh, sorry, my Salah's in. Urgh! We've just let them... We've just let them waltz through. And it is a little bit frustrating. We do let that happen every now and then. And I think sometimes we need to be a little bit more clinical. Um, and it is uh, Christiansen, who is more of an attacking-minded fullback, who has let that happen. We are going to demand more from the team. Christiansen with the throw. I just thought I haven't set up my um, set pieces in any way, shape, or form since new players have come in. So maybe I need to do that at some point. Madouake gets it to Zuma. Over to Teal Lemons. I don't know how that was. I said that, Teal Lemons. Uh, Tillemans, Alvarez gets the ball now over to Bowen. Bowen gets it up to Christiansen. Christiansen going to look to try and whip it in. Gets it in. Jared Bowen is there and it is 1 1. We are back in the game. And Jared Bowen, that man again, who scored so many goals last season, starts this season with a goal. And it was Christiansen with the cross. A good start for the young. I want to say he's Danish. I'm not going to lie. I've completely forgotten. Whatever he is, it's a good start from him. Sorry, I was just looking. There's a light on my microphone. I couldn't see if it was on. Because um, if it wasn't on, it meant that I'm recording this match without any sound. Um, but that is a great start for us to get back into the game like that. Um, and we've just given away a penalty. I don't even know what happened there. It just looked like Mo Salah dived, in my opinion. But I would say that, wouldn't I? And oh, I was hoping LaFont might do some... Uh, some uh, penalty saving heroics, but Mo Salah gets his second of the game. And uh, yeah, I'd like to have seen a replay of the penalty incident, to be honest with you. We're not going to see it, but um, yeah, we're just lumping the ball forward. We're set to short passing. I don't understand why I play out from the back occasionally just means we lump it forward. Haaland's in. They've got Erling Haaland in the team, by the way, Liverpool. Just in case you. Didn't think it was unfair of how good they were already. They've got Erling Sodding Haaland in their team. I think we're going to experiment with turning our uh, pressing up this season. Oh, sorry, I was pausing then because I thought we might have got a goal. But we have got a corner. It'll be interesting to see, actually, with the players we've got in the team, how we are from set pieces. Because we haven't got our usual set piece takers in. And it showed there, really. The delivery wasn't good. Armada now going to try and whip the ball in. Has the ball. Gets it to Declan Rice. Declan Rice, not the one I want to be crossing the ball in, really. And the game agrees. And it ends the highlight. We've not been very good so far in this half. And it has been a little bit concerning. However... It's against, as we've established, a very good Liverpool team. I mean, they've just improved on their team. And it's actually disgusting how good their eleven is. I mean, let's just take a moment to just reflect on their eleven, shall we? Let's just take a moment to look at this team. I mean, other than Kelleher, that's a disgustingly good team. And they've got Paolo Dybala on the bench. And Nick Lasool as well. It's literally just Kelleher, who I, I can't imagine is a world-class goalkeeper. No, no, he's not. He's only ever made six appearances for Liverpool. It's only really him that... Right. You all saw at the beginning of the game that I set this up. I've just realised. You all saw that I set this up, right? With instructions. It's the second time this has happened to me knowingly. I... One moment. Okay, we've gone with that. I'm so confused as to why that happened. But we're going to try that and see whether that does anything. It gives us a better chance in the second half, maybe. Um, we've done all right. Alvarez hasn't had a particularly good game. Um, continues the trend of him just being so unpredictable. Um, Diop's not having a great one either, but we're going to carry on with how we are. We're just going to say, uh, that one. And then we're just going to say, not happy with your defensive work. Weren't that bad. Not happy with your finishing. And that seems to have motivated everyone. So, we're going to go into the second half. We're going to carry on. And there we go. If we can carry on. Thank you, game. Uh, and we've started with an early corner, whipping it in. Kurt Zuma's there. Kurt Zuma hits the crossbar. What a chance. Mo Salah cannot win the ball, though. And Diop now has the ball to Armada. But the highlight ends. 
We're playing all right. We're not brilliant, but we are having chances now. Bowen with another corner, looking for Zuma. And Madueke is there. And Madueke makes it 2-2. We're back in it, boys. We're back in it. And we've done it through set police o'clock. Set police? The set police. That's who we are. We're the set police. I'm tempted to make that the episode title. I won't make that the episode title. But we have equalised again. And we have definitely started the second half a lot better than they have. That does not mean, however, that we're going to continue that way. Liverpool are still a very good football team. But we are now at least trying to counter them. Um, in fact, I'm going to drop a bit of encouragement. Why not? Uh, now, let's see whether we can push on and get a third. Because if we can, we were showing we've got bounce-back ability. I mean, again, I've said it before. If we lose this game, it's not the end of the world. But I would quite like to win it. And I, I'm liking the way that we're going about this. The way that we're trying to get back into it. And Alvarez is there! And Alvarez is there again! He should have held the ball up. But he's a striker at the end of the day. He's not going to hold the ball up because he's a striker. Um, right, we're at substitute o'clock, I think. So let's have a look. We've got some very tired legs out here. We've played a lot of friendlies. So it stands to reason that we had some tired legs out here. So we're going to bring Brenner on, who's had a good preseason. So hopefully he can kick on this year. We're also going to bring off Madueke for... Uh, we'll bring Hadji on, actually, on that right-hand side. And I think Declan Rice might be coming off for Thomas Suchek. And we've got another substitution because of the tournament, the tournament, because of the competition this is. So I think, actually, we might bring on Liv Romento. Uh, it's been Goff, Liv Romento, so for James Justin. Liv Romento has had a good game, as has Christiansen. I'm very impressed with both of them, actually. We're going to be leaving Thiago Armada on, which I'm not overly thrilled with the idea of, unless we can take him off as well. Can we take Armada off too? We can. We can indeed. So we are actually going to bring Harvey Elliott on against his former club. We're going to put him out there as a winger. I wouldn't normally do that, but um, we are going to have to put him in that position. And we're going to go with that. Five substitutions. Let's see if we can turn the game around and cause some mischief with Liverpool. We have been the superior team in this second half, in my opinion. Chris Jansen to Hadji. Harvey Elliott just gets the ball and sprints with it. He's going to be looking to whip that ball in. What a pass that is to James Justin. Gets it to Tielemans. Tielemans out to Justin. Justin's going to try and whip this in. He's got Tielemans in support. Gets it to Bowen. Bowen back to Justin. Whips it in. Looking for Hadji. Hadji is there, but he heads in at the keeper. What an opportunity. Remember, if we draw this game, it will go straight to penalties, so there will be no extra time, um, which I'm very grateful for. Erling Haaland does not win the header against Diop. Bowen now looking for Harvey Elliott. Don't tell me Harvey Elliott is going to be the one to get the winner. No. <laughs> no, the answer to that is he's not. Um, but it was a good move. I'm very happy with that move. Right, they've made a couple more substitutions themselves. Hadji, though, to take the corner. The set-piece king himself looking for the header. Sushek. Who hits the crossbar? My goodness, what an opportunity that was. We're going to drop a bit more encouragement and we're going to go attacking. We have been the better team in this half and we're going to push on towards the end for a victory if we can. It's a free kick for us. Zuma gets it to Christiansen. Ball over the top looking for Brenner. Doesn't find his man, but Sushek intercepts, but Henderson intercepts as well. Erling Haaland now is going to try and bulldog his way through. He's found a way through thanks to Dybala, but Lafont is equal to the shot. Yes, boys. Don't know what that voice was. Um, I'm going to encourage again one more time before the penalty shootout. Lads, you've done us proud there. That was a heck of a performance. Absolute heck of a performance. Right, we need to sort this penalty shootout lineup out. Uh, Brenner should be on this list. I don't know why he's not here by default. He should be at least second, if not first. So we're just going to adjust this. Um, I'm just going to play with this. Bear me one second. Okay, here's our list on the left-hand side. Tillemans to start with Brenner, Sushek, Bowen and Elliot rounding out the top five. And then you can see the rest of the squad just there as well. Wow. I mean, if we lose this, it's not the end of the world. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pump the fists. No, I'm not going to pump the fist. I'm going to point the thing. Now, do you know what? Hands on hips. I'm just going to say, relax. Pick your spot. Don't change your mind. I'm also going to have a quick chat with wherever he is. Yanis uh, Hadji. You're going to be fine, mate. Okay, didn't work. Let's do it, boys. Let's do it. Here we go. Tillemans to take the first penalty. Kelleher saves. Wow. That's huge. Kelleher saves the first penalty, and it's Erling Haaland to take first penalty for Liverpool. Lafont has saved big penalties before, but he does not save it here. And we might be losing the uh, the uh, Community Shield 
here, but I'm not too bothered about it. Again, as I said before, Brenner to take, and Brenner does score. It goes the same way that Tielemans did, but didn't matter for the keeper. Kelleher could not save it. Mo Salah now to take. He's already scored a penalty in the game. Maybe that means Lafont knows which way he's going to go, and Lafont did, but he couldn't quite get there. Was it his reactions? Was it his agility? Was it his speed? We don't know, but it's Sushek to take our third penalty. And he manages to put it in the corner and scores it. Um, we're keeping in the penalty shootout, but we need Liverpool to miss. I mean, look, they've got Dybala as their third penalty taker. It's disgusting. It's utterly disgusting. Dybala steps up to take, scores it. Um, we're getting to the point where we need to score our penalties, but we actually need them to either miss or for us to save one. Uh, Jared Bowen, who I think took a penalty or two either last season or in the first season. Oh, he buries that like a pro. What a penalty that was from that man. Uh, Fabinho. Kind of need him to miss this, if we're being completely honest. If he could miss it, it would be great. Hasn't missed it. Which means all of the pressure is on, because of course it is, Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott has to score to keep us in. And then we're hoping for Liverpool's fifth penalty taker to mess it up. Elliott, the former Red, to take it. Oh, he's calm as you like for a 20-year-old. What a penalty. And it's going to be... Is it Mikolenko? Is it... Oh, it's Curtis Jones. The other player we were looking at, Curtis Jones, is going to be the man's take. And we are hoping Auburn Lafont can save this and get us through to another round of penalties. Auburn Lafont, can he be a hero for us in this penalty shootout no he can't well do you know what we fought back in that game and that's all i can be proud of and we were really giving it to them towards the end congratulations to liverpool much congratulations they deserve the win on balance but to be honest we really gave it to them and if we can perform like that i mean i'm i'm still saying the fact that my player instructions completely disappeared when i checked them is an issue and i think that might have cost us because once we changed it we were very good i thought so take take this result with a little asterisk a little i can't speak with a little asterisk on it because the goalkeeper didn't do the cartwheel they changed that the goalkeeper always does the cartwheel um, you can see, we weren't outclassed. They were the better team. But when you compare our first half to our second half, and their first half to their second half, second half, we were the better team. We were the better team. Look at all the stats completely. So, we had a better average rating. Uh, headers one were better. Tackles one were better. Our pass completion was better. We committed one less foul. We had more corners, better possession. We had the same amount of clear-cut chances. It was just our shots and then all that kind of stuff that cost us. And I genuinely think it was because the first half we weren't prepared. I'm proud of the boys for that performance. I genuinely am. Don't mind that game whatsoever. I don't mind us losing it. We will be back for the Southampton game. And then as well as the Southampton game, I mean, we might as well do a double for the first proper episode. I mean, again, this is episode zero. It will be the start of the new season uh, in the next episode, the proper start of it with the Premier League game. So we'll do Southampton and Watford. Um, we'll finish off the month of uh, August and then we'll probably get into Champions League football somewhere around here. If all of that sounds like a plan to you, then I suggest you watch the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you've enjoyed, please leave a like on the video. Consider subscribing as well for more Football Manager awesomeness. I've been Stubo. You've been awesome. Cheers for watching. Bye-bye for now.